Um, so today, let's do the left side, and God's peace be with you, to the right side, and let the right side respond, and also with you. So we all have stars today, and one of the reasons that we have stars is because we are observing Pippin, and that's part of the lights in the aisle. Um, 
is so we can kind of experience kind of something similar to what the wise men experienced. Because the star was how they were led, the path was lit up for them on their journey to go see Jesus. And when they got there, they gave gifts. And we all just, uh, we all just ended uh, Christmas, so we all know what it was like to give gifts and to receive gifts. But the wise men were giving special gifts to God. And so we too follow this lighted path that leads us to church to give our gifts of what we have to God. Another interesting part of the story is that these wise men weren't considered to be, um, well, let's just say, religious folk. They would have been people on the outside, not familiar with uh, all of what people would have been familiar with, with religion in Jesus' day and time. But yet God chooses them to reveal himself to. His greatest revelation is that the message is not just for the Jewish people, but it is for all people. So during this time of the new year, we can follow our stars. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this time together and help us to follow our stars as we move into the new year and to share our gifts with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now for our special music, we have a treat. Steve uh, Pratt from First Congregational and Kathy Davis are going to do a violin-guitar uh, duet on piano. I'm going to get it right this time. Uh, they'll do Go Tell It on the Mountain first, and then um, We Three Kings. The piano comment was because in Hawaii, uh, Jesse said I was going to bring my piano up to play with <laughs>
Does he? Uh, it's not in your hymnal, but I'm sure that many or maybe all of you know the chorus, which goes, Star of Wonder, Star of Night, Star with Royal, Beauty Bright, Westward Leading, Still Proceeding, Guide Us to Thy Perfect Light. So we would like you to sing the chorus for us and also the words, if you know the words.
This morning we are beginning a new message series for the new year called Who Are We? The title of the series comes from the CSI theme song sung by that rock and roll band called The Who. Some of us might be old enough to remember that. It goes, Who are you? Who, 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 who are you? <coughs> the start of a new year is often a time where we reassess direction and ask questions about who we are and where we are going in life. We do this by making New Year's resolutions. We sign up at the gym again. We find things to do uh, that make ourselves better people. At the beginning of this new year, beginning with the season of Epiphany, we will be looking at ourselves as a church. Who are we? We will be beginning that process with visioning meetings where we can ask these questions about who we are as a church and what our plans and hopes for the future are. Epiphany is about how God has been revealed to us in the person of Jesus the Christ. Epiphany means to reveal or to make manifest. Throughout this Caesar series, we will be looking at what Jesus reveals to us about who we are as Christians, who have our identity in Him, and how that can guide us in our visioning of what our future hopes for the church will be. Our scripture reading for this morning is a classic story that we read every time this year during Epiphany. It's the story of the wise men who follow a star that leads them to the baby Jesus. Hear these words. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down to pay him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of Christ. Wise men observe a star, and that leads them to Jerusalem. And they ask the question, where is the king of the Jews to be born? This sparks the attention of King Herod, because that was his title. He was known as king of the Jews. Herod was installed by the Roman Empire to keep the Jewish population under control. He actually built the temple in Jerusalem and used religion for his own ends, like a modern-day politician. He was interested in what, what was going on. He was interested in what was going on with these wise men talking about a new king of the Jews because he wants to know whether someone is trying to replace him as the king. 
So he pretends to be interested in order to get more information from these wise men. He calls the religious experts from the temple to ask them where the Messiah is to be born. They say Bethlehem. He instructs the wise men to go to Bethlehem, and when they found the child, report back to him so he too can pay his respects. Yeah, right. The wise men follow that star in Bethlehem, and it leads them to the baby Jesus. The text says that the star actually hovered over where they and the baby Jesus were. I can't imagine that. It would be very bright. They offer them gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then they are warned in a dream not to return to Herod. So they leave for their own country, taking another route. As we begin our visioning of where the light of Christ is guiding our church in this new year, there is much that we can learn from the story of the wise men following a star to find Jesus. Uh, there will always be those who will try to prevent the journey from happening. There will always be Herods of this world who will act in this way. And there's a good reason for this. It is because following Jesus involves giving up status, power, and authority, and giving all of that to God through Jesus Christ. And the Herods of this world do not want to do that. This week on Facebook, my pastor, uh, Brian Kirk, had a wonderful quote that summed this up really well, I thought. It was from the late Lutheran German pastor scholar Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was murdered by the Nazis uh, during World War II. And this quote really drove this point home for me. It is this, who will celebrate Christmas correctly? Whoever finally lays down all power, all honor, all reputation, all vanity, all arrogance, all individualism, beside the manger. The primary manifestation or revelation of the wise men finding the baby Jesus is that God in Jesus is drawing all people to God's self. Even those that many would not expect to be included into the family of God, the wise men were foreigners from the East. They were Gentiles and his non-Jewish people. This revelation of God's inclusion of the Gentiles is also made known in Matthew's Gospel at the beginning and at the end of that Gospel. At the very beginning, there is this long genealogy, probably one of the most boring genealogies to read through. Go to Matthew chapter 1 and go through it. This one, we got that one, we got this one, we got that one. But if you go through that genealogy on the opening of Matthew's Gospel, you'll see some interesting things. Numerous women are mentioned in that genealogy, and that was something that tended not to happen in the ancient world. And there's many of those women in that genealogy that were non-Jewish. So right from the beginning, it's saying Jesus, even in his childhood ancestral tree has other people included into that than just his Jewish ancestry. And at the end of Matthew's Gospel where the resurrected Jesus says, go into all the world, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a message of including all people. One of the sayings of our denomination that I've always treasured and then we say it every Sunday, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Let us in this new year live into this radical welcome and inclusion of all people that God shows us through the wise men who follow a star to Christ. You all have cut out stars that were given to you when you first entered the sanctuary. I'd like for you to Take those out and then hold them up. I would like for you to hold on to them throughout the course of this series and think about what gifts you can bring to this community of faith here at Mayflower Congregational UCC in Sioux City. What is your vision of what this church should be moving into the new year? 
The road lights that you see when you first walk into the sanctuary are symbolic of the light from the star that the wise men followed. Don't worry, the rope lights will only be up for this sermon series and will be taken down at the end of February. We too in this sanctuary are following the light of Christ, which leads to this church. This is where our dreams and visions for the future become a reality. Where is your star guiding you as we move into this new year? Amen.
Let us go to God in prayer with a few moments of our own silent meditation. We specifically lift up in prayer Christian Walker, that the courts may show him mercy. And for Raymond's daughter-in-law, for healing and for blessing in these troubled times. the pastoral prayer, I'd like to share with you this prayer for Epiphany that is by Nancy C. Town. Let us pray. Lord of bright and abiding light, you have shown us in the person of Jesus, your Son, a new way to live. You have poured your light into the world and have asked us to live in the light rather than run and hide in the darkness of doubt and despair. You promise to be our light all of our days and ask us to place our trust in you. The journey in this life is risky. It means that we will have to be very serious about our service to you, giving you our best and offering hope and light to others. In this new year, we bring to you the names and situations of others for whom light seems to be a stranger. They struggle with ill health, economic hardship, broken and damaged relationships, loss of loved ones and anxiety. We place them in your care. Let your light shine on them, bringing healing and hope. Now I invite all of those here with us to name those who are in their hearts this day, either silently or out loud, during a moment of silence. Help us to be bearers of that light in all that we do. For we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, whatever words are comfortable for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let us prepare. 
prepare for the morning off. It is at this table where God's inclusive love is made most known to us. This is where Christ reveals himself. It is an open table where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And let us remember the story of our faith. On the eve of of desertion and betrayal, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, saying, This is my body, my life, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, and after pouring out the wine, said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. As we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome. The way we do communion is that the ushers will come forward, uh, pass each element out to you in your seats, and then as we get the bread and the wine together, we do it in unison uh, with me, and they will start on the center aisle and work their way around. Let us prepare for the meal.
like to offer this uh, benediction blessing by W.L. Wallace and Kate Comstock. People of God, may the star we follow be the steady radiance of God's mystery, the light of the world of which we catch but a glimpse. May love rise like a star within us, shining light on the paths of justice and compassion we are called to travel. Amen. Thank you.